Hey everybody, it's Sharon here. Today is Earth Day 2020 and I thought I would take a minute to show you how to paint the earth <laughs> in uh, watercolor and just a little bit of acrylic. Um, so grab your paintbrush, grab your pencil, and uh, let's paint the earth. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with um, a piece of paper. I am going to use watercolor paper because that's what I have handy. Um, if you're using pencil crayons or crayons or pastels, you can just use regular paper. Um, if you're using water paints, and I'm gonna use the kind that my kiddos use because it's close by and you probably have it lying around. Um, you can use this, um, but I wouldn't use it on just regular paper. Maybe even Bristol board is better than your printer paper uh, because it has the wa the paper has to hold water. So, if you're using paints, try and have paper that will work really well with the paints. If you're using markers or crayons or pencil crayons or pastels, um, whatever paper you have is fine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a circle. Now you can get something out and trace a circle or you can freehand it like me and I'll give you a little tip about freehanding is if you're unsure about your circle you might want to just practice by making the motion before you drop your pencil down just like that and it helps. We don't need to worry about making a perfect circle here. We just want to get as close as we can. Sometimes I like to turn my page around to see if I can help the lines a little bit. I'm going to commit to some of the lines here by going over them with just a little bit darker of a pencil line. And this is just for fun, so it's okay if our pencil lines show through. Um, just do your best. I'm going to take my eraser. I have a needable eraser, but you might have a different type of eraser and that's okay too. But I'm going to take my eraser and get rid of some of the extra lines that I don't need. So I have a nice clean circle here. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I want to um, give myself some guidelines about where the land masses are and this doesn't have to be perfect. This is an impression of the earth. It's not an exact rendering of the earth. So um, you might pick an area of the map where you are most familiar with and um, you might just try to do your best and show that there's a difference between land and water. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look, my reference is off to the side here, so I'm going to look at part of the land masses of the earth and I'm just going to kind of do um, some sketch lines that show a difference between land and water without worrying too much about the orientation, the direction, or that the shape is exact. I want to kind of indicate that there are different continents. Maybe I want to indicate that there's islands, especially if that's part of where I live. That might seem a lot more important to me. Um, I'm just doing some rough lines here. not worried exceptionally about complete accuracy. So I don't know if you can tell, but this is sort of North America, South America, because that's part of the part of the world where I live. If I lived um, in a different part of the world, I might have focused on that a little bit, um, especially if it was more familiar to me. So for me, this part here is my water and this is my landmass. So I can leave it just like this. I'm not going to worry about the lines too much, but if I pressed really hard, I might want to take my eraser and lighten them up just a little bit. Okay, now the important part here is I need to have 
my paint and I need to have my cup of water and I also want to make sure I have a paper towel. Paper towels are a hot commodity these days so if you don't have paper towel um, or if you are working at reducing waste um, to help the environment of the earth you could use a cloth for this. Okay, You could use a cotton cloth or rag. Um, nothing quite as scratchy as a face cloth um, just something soft that you use um, to wipe things down without any cleaners. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is mix my color and with solid paint, with solid watercolor paints, what you do is you put the water on the top and then you rub your paintbrush to activate the pigment and use that paint on your page. You can also start off by putting some water right on your paper so that when you come in with your paints it creates a wash or a wet on wet effect. That's up to you. A lot of people like to paint just with a dry paintbrush or dry page but um, a lot of very fun techniques happen when you put water on your page first and then you come in to do a wash. And so I'm going to choose this blue color for my water, I'm putting the water on top. I'm rubbing the paintbrush to activate the pigment, and then I'm coming in here. That's a very strong pigment, so I want a little bit more water. And I might add a little bit of purple just to darken it up a little because I feel like that color was not exactly what I wanted. Okay, so I'm coming back in, I'm allowing the paint to move through the water to create some interesting effects. I'm not going to put it on too thick because I want this painting to dry very quickly because I want to be able to work on other parts of the painting without having to wait too long. When you work very, very wet, you have to be patient and let things dry in between layers. So, a little purple, a little blue, a nice strong pigment. And just move that pigment around into where my water parts are, into where the wash was laid out. And so what I'm doing here, this is, a, this is an art term, and what I'm doing here is I am painting the negative space of the landmass. It's not completely negative space, it's ocean, or it's, it's water, so it is a thing. But I'm going around the land masses, which is considered negative space at this juncture. Okay, I want some fun, happy accidents to happen here. So I'm kind of bringing in some different pigments. Just to see how that happens, how it blends together. Now because it's very wet, and let's move that away from there so you don't get the reflection, it's very wet here. So I need to be patient and let it dry. Before I let it dry, I'm going to do something super cool. I'm going to take salt from the kitchen just regular salt, and I'm going to put it on here, and then I'm going to let it dry, and you'll see the technique that it's going to create. So here we go. See, I put my salt right there on the water. Now, let's let it dry. So now that we've let it dry a little bit, let's have a look at the texture that the salt created here. It's very cool. This part is still drawing just a little bit, but look how cool. So let's move on to the land. We're going to get some of our green and maybe a touch of the brown In a small, I'm using, here I'm using a medium flat brush, but use whatever you have. Make sure you get the color that you want. 
I definitely want to use a color that is a little bit more yellow than that. So I'm going to mix it up. And I'm going to grab just a little bit of the brown here. That's better. I'm going to carefully follow that edge. I'm not using too, too much water here because I do want it to dry pretty quickly. I'm being careful about my edges here. One of the reasons I waited for the water to dry was so that when I paint in the land, they don't bleed together. Now, if you want that to happen, that's fine. But I wanted to make sure that there was an edge between the two colors. So I'm just going to go in and fill in my land with a base color of green, representing all that beautiful nature that we like to celebrate on Earth Day. And did you know that this is the 50th year for Earth Day? 50 years of people celebrating the Earth and coming together to try and decide how we can work on better protecting all of our natural resources. This year is a little different. There are a lot of resources online this year since most people are at home. So having a look out online for some information about Earth Day is totally up to you but there's lots of information available out there if you wanted to learn more. Now, I have the base color for my land down, and as you can see, I've pulled together, once again the light is kind of reflecting, there we go, I've pulled together some more pigments, so I've let the color be stronger and lighter in different areas of the land just to give it some interest. I can move the paper around just to let that color move around as well. Now if you're using um, a washable marker, like a Crayola marker, there's something really interesting that you can do. You can draw with your marker and then take just water and a paintbrush and paint with that marker and it will blend just like I did here with the green. So give it a try, if not on this painting, perhaps on another painting. Color with your Crayola markers, use just water and a paintbrush and see all the different kinds of effects that you can make. Now I'm going to take the edge of my paper towel here and I'm going to do something called lifting. I'm going to dab it just a little bit into the land masses and lift out some of that color. Not all of it, I want it to be there, but I also want to give it some texture. Now there's two more steps for my painting. The next step for me is going to be the outside. I want to do just a little bit of space outside the earth because that's a really important part for me is where we are, where the earth is in space. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna do some finishing touches on the earth. Let's do it together. So for space, I'm going to start with water on the paper, not too wet just a little bit, and then I'm going to start to put my colors in. So I'm going to go around, and you can see I still have some green in my brush. So I do need to clean that out really good, but this isn't super, super important because I don't need it to be white. So I'm gonna go around just a little bit. because I'm not going to paint the entire space. I just want to show that the earth is in space. And I can decide if I want it to be 
a round or square right now. And right now I think I'm choosing square. So I'm putting corners around my globe in the wet water. Now as I let this dry just a little bit, I'm going to pick my black color and I'm going to add a little bit of brown and purple to it to give it a bit of depth. And then I'm going to come in and very carefully work my way around the earth with my pigment. See, that's getting to be darker and darker, just as I like it. to create just a little bit of texture. So I'm dabbing my paper towel, the side of my cloth or my paper towel, to give a little bit of texture. For all of you who are perfectionists, this sometimes can happen if your paint is not all the way dry. One color will bleed into the other. I want you to know that that's okay. Even if it's not what you intended, you could still work with it. It does not ruin your painting. Your painting is still great, even when things like that happen. Oftentimes you'll be able to find a way to make that work for you, and if it's not going to work for you, just ignore it. Okay, so I've put a few stars in using a, sp using a splatter technique and then I came in with a dry brush on top and defined a few more of them. It's a little hard for you to see so far away, but here you go. So I've put some stars into my space around the earth and I'm liking how this is turning out, but I kind of want it to be a little more stylized. And so I'm going to do two things to stylize it. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a black pen. This is a waterproof ink pen. Micron's um, ink is generally waterproof. And um, I'm going to come back on top. I want to make sure that my painting, I'm going to get those extra pieces of salt off, is dry before I do that, just in case I'm using a marker or a pen that is not waterproof. If I put that black pen into wet paper or into water, it's going to bleed and the ink will pull, the water will pull the ink into it and spread around. Now that, that's very cool, but it's not what I want here. So I made sure that my painting is dry and I'm going to come back in and I'm going to just put in some black line around the earth. I'm going to do it a couple of times because I want it to look a little less rigid. And I'm going to do the same thing using kind of a sketchy line and going around the land masses that I drew. This is why I say in this style of of painting, it's okay if you do decide that your pencil lines are showing through. If you pressed a little hard at the pencil stage, that's okay. Because here I come in and I'm just going to outline the man land masses. This shape changed on me quite a bit and that's okay. So I'm just going to come back in. I'm very loosely 
going over, it doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, I want the lines to be a little less perfect. That's part of the style that I'm going for here. I do want to kind of indicate that there are islands that I put in even if they disappeared a little bit. And I'm just going to have fun with these lines. They don't have to be perfect. I'm going to do one more around here just because I feel like I could use for a little extra oomph. Now again, I like how this is turning out, but I want to add in a little bit more stylization. <clears throat> so I'm going to take a detail brush and a little bit of acrylic paint that's watered down because acrylic paint is opaque. This is your um, student grade acrylic paint in white. It's more opaque than watercolor and so it's going to show more white and less what is behind it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a few clouds across the top of our earth and just kind of make some swirly lines and cloud cover. It might take me a couple coats to get it as bright as I want it, but it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I basically just want to show that there's clouds in life and the ecosystem that is sustaining our earth includes weather. my friends is how I am going to do my Earth Day painting for 2020. I'm going to add a few more stars out here. Remember, this is 50 years of Earth Day today, April 22nd, 2020. But most of us are at home and I'm super glad that you've joined me today for this little art project, and even if you joined me on a day that was not Earth Day. I'm so glad you're here. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.